I'm Monica Ukande, I'm the Health Improvement Officer at Haringey um, Council. And just to give you some context to how we started to develop the whole systems approach in Haringey, um, in 2014 we had started to do a lot of work um, to embed a strong um, health in all policies approach and we recognised the importance of kind of developing those relationships internally um, in order to try and test the limits of our planning and licensing powers. Um, it was really important to build on some of the relationships we had internally to try and collaborate more, to build some strong local partnerships. And Deb, who's not here today, worked really hard to develop um, her approach um, for embedding the health in all policies um, approach. And it was, it's, it's been instrumental to the work that we've since done. So why did we need to do this? I don't want to bore you by kind of echoing some of the stats and the figures that had, have already been shared today. It's exactly the same in Haringey. One in three of our year six children are overweight or obese, and this increases to two thirds in adulthood. Just to tell you a little bit more about Haringey, it's often described as a borough of two halves. Um, it's really unique in that the east of the borough is quite highly deprived. The west of the borough is a lot more affluent, so Muswell Hill, Highgate, a lot more affluent. And so what you find is that children living in the deprived areas of Haringey are two and a half times more likely to be overweight or obese than their peers in the west of the borough. And the little red dots that you can see on the map, those are our fast food venues that were mapped onto there. So you've got the percentage of year six children who are overweight or obese, and you can see the differences there between the east and the west. And then you've got the number of fast food outlets that are mapped onto this. So some of the things that we started to do is a lot of kind of local research to understand and unpick some of these differences. And we engaged a lot with um, our year six children. And also we did a lot of local research with our secondary schools. And again, as has been spoken about um, today, a lot of the things that came out that they reported to us was around availability, affordability and acceptability. So in terms of availability, the school children told us that they had a limited amount of time in their lunch breaks, so they needed to access places that were very close by. If you look at the east of the borough where it's highly populated with a number of fast food outlets and, and chicken and chip shops, they just go to whatever is um, accessible and available to them. Affordability, they demonstrated like a consumer mindset. They wanted deals. If they could get three packets of crisps for a pound, they would. If they could get two fizzy drinks for a pound, they would. They wanted to stretch their pound as far as possible. And acceptability, just kind of looking at some of the differences from reception um, age to like year six and then on to secondary school, there was kind of a lot of um, peer pressure um, what you found is that the year seven children who were like fresh faced, they've come in with their pack lunches from their mummies and daddies. And that would often change because you had like the year 10 and year 11s who would go out and very quickly people started to adapt the behavior to fit in. And then you've got the whole chicken and chips culture. As Gwenda said, um, systems leadership has been so um, instrumental in embedding a whole systems approach in Haringey. Um, core to this has been our cabinet member for health, um, Councillor Arthur, who also chairs our obesity alliance, which I'll talk to you about a in a little bit. But because he sits at cabinet level, he attends priority boards, he's also at our joint health and wellbeing board, it's been key in delivering some of those messages and getting him to champion these things. The use of infographics, as Gwenda mentioned as well, so having bite-sized information that's digestible, uh, it's helped to make it everybody's business. Identifying kind of shared objectives and goals for various departments has also helped. Um, we are in times of austerity, there's limited resources and capacity, so where we're not duplicating um, well, in order to not duplicate, we've tried to, we've tried to kind of work together um, collaboratively to, to achieve this. And um, also, it's been really key to kind of, um, we've had obesity as part of our corporate plan, for example. So that's a strategic high-level docu 
document. We've been able to kind of embed obesity in cross-departmental strategies. And then also I was recruited as a dedicated resource to also partly work on the Obesity Alliance, but I also lead a lot of our um, community facing projects. So some of the participatory budgeting that Gwenda was talking about with Well London, our Haringey Walks campaign, there's been a lot of overlap and it's been a really good way of maximizing on some of the, the networks we had already built in the wider community. So to kind of kickstart this approach, we had a conference in the summer of 2015. We invited Professor Harry Rotterdam to speak, which was excellent. Um, it, was a, it was a really good way of trying to um, help everybody understand obesity. What you find when you speak to different people is that everyone has their kind of own um, idea as to why you know the world is getting bigger and bigger. Everyone seems to say you know either they blame the parents or they blame the individual or they say it's the environment or they say it's biological everyone has their own kind of idea but what was really key was to to help everybody understand the complexities of obesity and to help everybody recognize that there's actually no single solution we need a joint approach and we need multiple at, at actions to achieve at scale um, and so the uh, obesity conference was kind of key to our approach and key to um, helping to educate people on the obesity epidemic um, and, and getting people keen, ready um, to sign up. And we've seen this slide already, but I guess we just wanted to kind of communicate that we wanted to move away from kind of traditional approaches and identify local levers where we could add value. So what we have done is developed our obesity whole systems delivery plan. Now this can be found online and I can share that information after where you can find it. But we identified eight key areas um, and it was a good opportunity to kind of identify what we were already doing and identify any kind of gaps and opportunities. So what we found is that some of the um, activities and projects that we were already doing in the local community um, fell under more than one strand and that was uh, really positive but then there was kind of opportunities for example strand eight was the healthy weight workplaces where we improved staff and health well-being where we realized that internally we needed to champion this more so it's all well and good to kind of go out to the community and say right you need to do this and you need to do that but if we still had our cake clubs internally if our internal food offer was poor, then how could we really be having these conversations with other people? We needed to get our house in order. So that's something that we've been working on more recently. So we came up with our vision um, and our mission, which is to work together to reduce obesity in Haringey so that by 2018, fewer children, young people and adults will be overweight or, and obese. And we had an ask of our members who joined um, I'm going to come back to this. I'll just show you. So what we were sending out were pledge forms. And these pledge forms kind of identified our mission and our vision. And we got members to sign up to this, say, yes, they do believe in this mission and vision. And we worked with our partners to come up with pledges that they, these are small changes. So one of our organizations, um, Exposure is a group of young journalists. Um, they often do kind of uh, media activities, a lot of filming, film screenings, and the pledge they made was to change their food offer when they had young people at fil film screenings. So rather than having kind of like really sweet popcorn and crisps and chocolate bars, they started to offer breadsticks, carrot sticks, cucumber, that sort of thing. So it's, it's not asking people to do big, massive things because also, these community organisations often were struggling themselves with resource and capacity, but it was just small changes that could have a big impact. And we got the leaders to be champions of this, so they were able to do this and also have this conversation with other people. And so I'll go back. So from our launch, these figures are slightly out of date. We've got just over 70 members now, so this ranges from like NHS, the CCG, our community and voluntary organisations, the Fire Brigade, Tottenham Hotspurs, our Premier League club, 
um, a number of our schools, children's centres, no one was excluded so long as they believed in the vision and were going to pledge to make some sort of, of difference. Um, and now we have just about 70 pledges. And so over the course of, so from 2015 to probably the end of 2016, these were some of the key um, highlights that we were able to achieve. Um, again, some of the figures are a bit out of date. It's 151 no board game signs. So this is the one that attract, uh, attracted a lot of media uh, press because we were the first London borough to do this. But this was working in partnership with Homes for Haringey and our residence associations. And I think this was a, a really um, good example of collaboration because a number of the no board game signs went up because of things like crime and antisocial behaviour. So it was about working with the local community, reviewing some of these signs and addressing some of the concerns in the local community to make that change and make the case for outdoor play, which you don't find so often now. But working really closely with Homes for Haringey, looking at things like estate play. So a number of the residents' associations where they don't have play streets because they don't live on a road like everybody else there's still opportunities to come together as a community and play so it's been a really good example out of the 230 that reviewed 151 have now come down the Haringey walks campaign which I also spoke about it became quite popular because someone decided to change Haringey walks to something else but I won't say what that was I'll let you use your imagination so we ended up getting 11,000 hits on the site but <laughs> It, it, was a, it was a way of <laughs> being able to kind of generate that, that conversation and get people walking. We have just over 20 walk leaders now, three of which are based in the council. So going back to ensuring our own house is in order, we have three staff walks a week at lunch times, Monday, Tuesday and Thursday. So just getting people to take a break, so mental health and well-being, really encouraging that. Um, getting people to take a break and walk on their lunch breaks um, as a collective and speak to people that they wouldn't otherwise work with. And again, that's been a way of kind of, oh, you work on this, okay, having that conversation and then building there internally and getting people to, to champion things. And there's a number of other things that have been achieved across the year. And we've seen this already, but this was about kind of balancing the politics and getting the narrative right and just encouraging people to remember that it's a marathon and not a sprint. Um, obesity is probably where tobacco was 30 years ago so just being encouraged by that and learning from some of those lessons and just kind of taking each day, month, year at a time. In terms of next steps um, where we are with the Obesity Alliance so last year um, June we had our one year on event to kind of reflect on the achievements of the year and think about how we could take the Obesity Alliance to the next level. From that, some of the discussions that happened, our members who attended felt that rather than having these individual pledges where we work you know, in silo, we bring these together to have a collective impact. So we sent out a survey, we asked um, organisations to identify what they think should be the priority areas and out of that came sugar, walking and play. So we've looked at how we now realign um, the alliance to get some members working collectively on sugar, some on walking and some on play. And we've also changed how we now report because we had a high level steering group for the Obesity Alliance. So we had um, some senior uh, leaders on this steering group. Now what we're going to have is these three working groups and the chair from these working groups will be reporting to our cabinet member for health and, and we'll be working in that way now. Um, we've started to increase um, collaboration and engagement. Um, one of the things that we've done now is we have a monthly newsletter that comes out because th again the members wanted to keep in touch and know what each other is doing. We've also launched our microsite, so we managed to get our comms team to do this internally. It took about a year to get the site built, but it's done now. So um, moving away from it being kind of like a council -y type project, but instead a partnership, having an external site so people are not having to access information from the council website, but kind of showing that this is a partnership and getting everyone to feel like it is their business and also maximising now the opportunities through regeneration. So.